In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. Numerical methods are used when approximate analysis can be deemed accurate enough. This is true for most cases. The exact solutions to the Navier-Stokes equations are only a few, and these are all for cases that are greatly simplified. For example, Coet flow which is really just 2D flow. There's a solution to the Navier-Stokes equations. For real life cases such as flow inside pumps or for staggered pipelines or flow across cars and aircraft and many more, we have to turn to numerical methods to get insight. Even with using a numerical method, simplifications have to be made to the problem being analyzed so that we can get an answer in an efficient amount of time. Three discretization schemes used in the numerical approach are finite element method, finite difference method, and finite volume method. Finite element analysis is widely used for structural analysis, but can also be used for CFD. For numerical analyses, the continuous problem domain is decomposed into a discrete set of points called grid points. The numerical analysis will provide a solution at each of these grid points. Whereas in the continuous domain, the solution is known everywhere, the solution in the discrete domain is known only at the grid points. For the solution between grid points, interpolation is used. The higher the number of grid points, the smaller the distance between them. In the figures at the bottom of the slide, the continuous variation of velocity is compared to the discrete representation of this variation. To better represent the knee and the curve for velocity, more grid points could be added. The more grid points we use to discretize the fluid domain, the more accurate the numerical solution will be. However, the cost and time required to obtain the numerical solution increases with the number of grid points used in the discretization. As mentioned earlier, because we have discretized the equation for small intervals, these intervals should be reflected in the flow domain as well. The equations will then coincide with the segments of the domain. The two meshes shown are for two-dimensional geometries. The advantage of the triangular mesh is that it can more easily follow a contoured shaped body. For three-dimensional bodies, the surfaces of the solid bodies are meshed with the triangular mesh. The volume mesh uses three-dimensional element shapes. Using Taylor series, we can replace partial differential equations with algebraic equations. Notice that if we truncate the Taylor series, there will be an associated error of the order of the first truncated term. For example, if we only consider the first order term of the Taylor series, the truncation error is on the order of delta x squared. Thus, if there are a lot of nodes, then delta x is small and the error is small. However, if there are a lot of nodes, the solution will take longer to solve. So a balance is struck between accuracy and computation time. Once algebraic equations are available for each point or node in the discrete domain, we can solve the matrix equation. This method of deriving the discrete equation using Taylor series expansions is called the finite difference method. Compared to finite volume method and finite element method, the finite difference method is the easiest method to understand due to its simplicity. Once we have a series of equations for each nodal point, we can solve them simultaneously using matrix decomposition methods. For CFD, iterative matrix solution schemes are the do dominant solution method used. Again, the more the points in the domain, the better the accuracy of the solution as delta x tends to get smaller. However, more points in the domain also means more equations to solve. Most commercial CFD software either use the finite element method or the finite volume method. Therefore, it is important to have familiarity with both methods. Each of these discretization methods can produce accurate solutions. However, there are advantages and disadvantages to consider. Autodesk CFD uses the finite element method of discretization due to its numerical stability and robust nature. Numerical analysis of even the simplest one-dimensional problems, for example, heat transfer across a wire, can be tedious. This is where modern-day computer technology steps in. With the use of a general-purpose CFD software, problem geometry can be defined in a CAD program. 
The CFD program then discretizes or meshes the geometry. The CFD software would then generate the equations for each nodal point. These equations are then solved by mostly iterative matrix schemes inside the software. Before beginning a CFD analysis, you should understand the nature of the simulation and the goals for performing the analysis. By answering these questions, the CFD simulation can most efficiently produce results that can be used in the design process. A CFD analysis consists of three main steps. The pre-processing step sets up the problem geometry for the CFD solver. Here we assign material properties and boundary conditions. We also discretize or mesh the geometry to create the nodes on which the CFD solution will be calculated. In this step, we also choose the physics of the fluid flow analysis. For example, steady or unsteady, incompressible or compressible, adiabatic or heat transfer. Solving is the step where com the computer takes over and does the number crunching. Remember, the bigger the mesh or grid, the greater the time needed for solving. Steady flow problems similarly take less time to solve than corresponding unsteady problems. Post-processing begins when the CFD solution is achieved. Here the results are gathered and analyzed. CFD software does have embedded post-processing tools that can provide extremely useful insight by plotting the results in a number of different fashions that aid the process of learning the fluid flow behavior. This concludes our video on numerical methods. In the next video, we will apply these methods to CFD simulations.